Hello and welcome to SciJoy. Today we're going to be talking about space shuttles. Tim and I were recently down in DC and we realized we were right next to the Air and Space Museum, so we wanted to stop by and check out Discovery. And since I actually used to work on the wiry bits inside the orbiter, that's the part of the space shuttle with the wings, I wanted to share some of my experiences with you guys. But I forgot my SD card so we couldn't use the nice camera, but we got a lot of great footage on Tim's phone, which we would love to share with you. On the Canadian arm, you can see that it says X. 689 on it, that's telling you the coordinate system. At the very tip of the uh, orbiter, that's zero. And then you're going to go down to the end where the astronauts are, and that's the 528 bulkhead. And go down further just past where you hit the Canadian arm and all your payloads, and that's the 1507 bulkhead. And we used to record discrepancies within six inches, and we would use the XYZ coordinate to tell people where these discrepancies were. When you climb in that door to go into the mid-body, it's actually pretty low, it's like a little compartment. You have to actually climb up a ladder to get out of the little compartment so you can go walk around the mid-body and be able to work on your wires or your payload or whatever you're going to be assembling that day. These two doors that are open right here, this is where the, uh, the orbiter used to attach to the external tank. And we would do all of our electrical connections through there, it was called the monoball that we would have to set up. And that's how the tank got electricity, and that's also the piping that would go through so you could get all the fuel out of the external tank and put it inside of the orbiter so it could burn and come out of the main engine. So this tile is a little bit longer than the other ones. Everything else is flat. And that's because we did something called the BLT mod, which is the boundary layer transition. This goes Mach 25 when it was coming back into the atmosphere, and not a lot of things go Mach 25. So you want to see what happens when you trip the boundary layer. If you had a little bump instead of just having everything very nice and smooth. So in the last few missions, every time we would make this bump a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger just to see what would happen. I actually had to work inside one of the compartments in the wings, so I had to climb on top of it. And the wing is squishy. And it's not like the underside, which is a hard ceramic. It's more of a felt-like material because it doesn't heat up as much. But the front of the wings heats up a lot, so that's why it has reinforced carbon-carbon. And we would check to make sure there was no damage to it by flashing lights on it. And then we would use thermal cameras to watch it cool. And the cracks would cool differently than any part of the wings that was already solid. And this is the tail of the space shuttle, and it was so big that it created its own shockwave during re-entry. So you would hear two sonic booms. Thank you for watching this episode of SciJoy. Since it's been a while, I wanted to give you some updates. We've been working on this, which is a high-tech bat house. It's a collab with Get Messy. And we're going to be finishing up our robotics series. That's our next set of videos for you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. You can also find us on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. And remember, keep exploring. I got stuck at the end of one of the space shuttle wings. 